Hi, I'm Gail from Bernina and Vaporville. And today I wanna to show you how I took this simple drafted face mask and put that on my computer, used my Bernina embroidery software and made a outline stitch that is going to be a base for a face mask. Now this is a fitted face mask with elastic behind the ears. It's comfortable, it's easy to wear, and it's easy on and off. And you can make it as fancy or as really simple as you want. Now also part of this demonstration is gonna show you how I took this and made this really cool combination of embroidery designs on my face. So the, um, File is in the description of the of this uh, YouTube video. You can go right into the description and link to my uh, it, where you can buy the base file for the mask. Now the designs on this mask came from a company called Scissor Tail Stitches. That's scissortailstitches.com, and the collection is Let It Grow. So that's what we're going to be using in the demonstration, and I'm going to reference that a lot. But I hope that you really enjoy this tutorial, whether you. You want to just make a plain face mask using my easy embroidery file or if you want to just go all out and make a formal face mask for a special occasion I'm going to show you how to do that too because this is a two-part video where I'm actually going to you know try to assist you in uh, figuring out how to edit a design use polygon select all of these things that might not mean anything to you right now but after the end of the video they will so let's get started Let's review a little bit of the things that you're going to need to make an embroidered fitted face mask. First of all, if you want to make yours fancy, and I know you want to make yours fancy because that's why you're tuning into this tutorial, the Bernina Embroidery Software 8 is what I used in order to add those flowers onto this base fitted face mask embroidery design. I have altered just a little bit to make it a little bit easier and to take a little bit of less time to stitch out. You can do this however you want. So you'll need the Bernina embroidery software in order to be able to do that designing. You're also going to need the fitted face mask embroidery base pattern that's available from Bernina of Naperville. You're going to need the Let It Grow embroidery collection from Scissor Tail Stitches if that is indeed the exact embroidery, embro bleh, embroidered flower designs that you need. It takes about a quarter yard of fabric to embroider on and the lining and for some of you that are a little cautious that embroidery is poking holes in your face mask material then you might want to put an additional inner lining so that would just be um, sandwiched up with the lining material and you would just have two layers instead of one layer on your lining you're also going to need some ultra clean and tear stabilizer as opposed to ultra clean and tea stabilizer that you see here. I, for whatever reason, leave the R's off of everything. Uh, curved embroidery scissors, fusible interfacing. I used Sure Taylor by Pellon. And this mask was embroidered with Aurifil cotton 50 weight thread. I have to tell you, I made this in my home studio where I call it camping, and I just didn't have my isocord with me, but I kind of like the look of the non-shine thread. Uh, just be warned, if you're using cotton thread to do embroidery, you're going to need to clean your sewing machine out because it is fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. Finally, you're going to put some OESD bobbin fill in there. We used white to go with this mask and your embroidery machine. Of course, when I'm at home, I'm using my Bernina 880 Plus. I used the maxi hoop because I always like to use the smallest hoop possible for the design that I'm using. And this design that I used fit in the maxi hoop. But if you have a Bernina 880 Plus with the jumbo hoop, the jumbo hoop will also work well. Now that's the designs that, or the supplies that you need for this particular demo to make this embroidered face mask. I also have included the base designs for those of you who may not have jumbo or maxi hoops. And there is versions of the face mask designs that will fit in the large hoop. So placing the pre-digitized designs in the fitted face mask design base is what we're going to do first. And there are some steps that you want to do ahead of time. Like I mentioned, you're going to need to purchase and download the fitted face mask based embroidery file from Bernina of Naperville. And like I just told you for the demonstration, we are using the small fitted face mask file where both sides of the mask are fitted in the maxi hoop. 
You're going to open your Bernina Embroidery software and select the design which best suits your machine. And don't forget, you can fill this blank area with anything you want. It doesn't have to be what I've picked out for you. But the demonstration is simply to show you what we did at Bernina of Naperville. You're empowered to use whatever stabilizer you feel most comfortable wearing on your face. We are not medical supply manufacturers. These masks are to protect from our spittle going on others when we're at the grocery store, gas station, park, and more. So everybody, come on, let's get started. Before we open our Bernina Embroidery software, I just want to take special note of the tools in that software that you're going to be using with today's software demonstration. You're going to be using the select tool, the polygon select, and the reshape tools. We're going to use insert embroidery. We may dabble a little bit with the closed object digitizing tool. For sure, we're using the mirror merge tool, which is the mirror merge vertical. And we're going to just touch a little bit uh, on the remove overlaps tool. So now we need to make our demonstration, sew this thing together so you can be the most beautiful person at the grocery store. The first thing that I like to do is determine what design I'm going to use. And like I mentioned earlier, we're using a design from the Let It Grow collection from Scissor Tail Stitches. So I'm going to insert my embroidery right here. And the one that I'm using for this particular project is Design 8. I did a few alterations to it. I maneuvered it, rotated it, enlarged and reduced some bits of it. Um, we don't need to go through exactly what I did. The idea is to get it to something where you feel comfortable manipulating the design. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this so these little buds or berries or whatever these things are are closer to the top part of the mask. So. When I select a design, as you can see, we get these little black handles and these little black handles will allow us to enlarge and reduce proportionately. We can skew it with these ones on the side, but right now I just want to rotate this little guy into place. So that means I'm going to click one more time until I get the white handles and the white handles are going to allow me to rotate my design all the way around until I get these little berries just the way that I want them. Let's try that. Okay, now I'm going to click it one more time with my left click so I get the bars again. And now I'm just gonna line this up into place. And now I see that I've got a few things not quite in the position that I want, but that is totally okay because we're going to fix these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of those um, black corner pieces and I am going to simply left click and drag on one of those pieces until I get something just about the right size. And I can rotate it again by clicking and rotating slightly. I want to move my berries into position just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I want to click on it until it has the black handles again. And now I'm going to left click and drag. And I'm going to drag it down into my hoop a little bit more. So when I select on this design, another thing I want to point out to you. Do you see how when I selected it, the entire thing is selected all together? That's really nice because that means I can click this whole blob together and it doesn't break apart. But I want to break it apart or ungroup it so that I can wiggle some more of these designs right in position the way that I want them. So I'm going to start first by grouping my original base design. So see how I'm using this um, color film over here on the right hand side? I'm selecting the blue and then I'm holding down shift and I'm selecting the black. Then I'm going to right click and group. So now those two pieces are going to be stuck together. Now I'm going to select my fancy flower design 
and I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to ungroup. Now what that's done is this thing is very, very volatile right now. I could break it apart at any given moment and move a leaf somewhere I don't want. So I wanna be really careful with how I select things. So just to kind of give you an idea of where my mind is gonna be going right now, I wanna get rid of these little white dots. I wanna get rid of this fern right here because see how that's kind of going into my mask and I don't want that and I want to kind of fill in this area up here so that means I'm going to be manipulating some of the stuff in my bouquet. I talked about in the handout our polygon select tool and this is really just an easy tool. I'm going to just left click. This is like rough cutting with scissors left click, left click, left click, and it will only select the designs that you grab the entirety of. And then you, after you do all your left clicking around to just grab it, squeeze your fist together, some might say, just press enter on your keyboard. And now my little white dots are selected and I'm just gonna delete them. And now those are out of the way. The next thing I wanna do is do the same thing down here. So I'm gonna select Polygon Select Tool and I'm going to take my fern away. Now see how that, that one is selected? I don't wanna delete this quite yet. I might wanna save this one for later. So I am going to left click and drag this design out of the way so that I might be able to use it again later. Now I have another issue going on over here. I have this little thing right there, but I that, that yellow fern, I am just simply going to manipulate this one little leaf. So I'm gonna go here and do my polygon select tool just to get the leaf, press enter, Remember how we rotated and did things with our main design? We can do the same thing with this. So I'm gonna just rotate that leaf. And now let's move that closer to the fern. Click away, okay, that looks pretty good to me. All right, so my next thing that I wanna play with are my berries. And I wanna move my berries up here closer to the nose part of my design. And then that will leave my little stems and there's magic that we're gonna do with those. So let's take the polygon select tool and lasso these berries. Press enter on your keyboard and we're gonna move these just there. Oh, I really love the way that looks. So now we're gonna do something really, really different here. We're going to enlarge our stem. And now I'm gonna polygon select one of my berries. And put that right there. Now I'm gonna take this other vine and we're gonna do the same thing with that one. That looks pretty good. And now, oop, gonna click that one and we're gonna make it larger. Now the only thing is, is I wish that berry were right here. So I'm gonna take my polygon select tool and move just that berry and hit enter. Move it right there. And now I want this to touch, but I'm gonna have to redo some things there. So let's zoom in really see what we're doing here, everybody. So now I'm gonna select the yellow and I'm gonna use the reshape tool. Oh my gosh, if you've not used the reshape tool, you have absolutely no idea what you're missing. Look at that. I was able to curve that stem down under my berry. Did you see how I did that? I played with moving the nodes. Yep, that's a node. You can do all sorts of weird things to nodes. Look at that, I could make it a trumpet if I wanted, but that doesn't really make for a pretty design. We don't want that. So we want this nice, beautiful, curvy little stem like that going into our berry. And if you don't like it entering the berry there, you can move 
your little nodes to get it into a spot where you think it looks more beautiful. I'm going to say to fit so I can see my whole design, deselect, click away so nothing is selected. And now look, I've got this design is now kind of going in the place where I want it to go. I got a little issue over here with my green. I'd really like to have more vines going up this way. I certainly wouldn't mind extending my vine for this um, yellow piece and maybe even making this leaf a little bit larger. So let's just do some more surgery on this. Um, I also have like a little blank spot in there that I'd like to fill in. Remember this little guy that I saved? Guess what? I'm going to just draw a little box around him by lift, left clicking and dragging. And now I'm going to just see if there's a spot where I can rotate this. Remember, you can rotate by clicking until you get those white handles. I'm just, you know, I'm just seeing what I think. I'm going to zoom in closer. Now, I would like to pop that little guy under that green piece, but you know what? I want this to be a simple demo, so we're not going to we're not going to do that. We're just going to rearrange our little leaf until we get something that we can be proud of. I'm just going to put that white right on the end of the leaf like that. Now, nobody will know that that wasn't there the whole time. Let's scroll up and deal with this mint flower that we have right here. We really want to select this and just make it the wee 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 bittest smaller. So let's polygon select. You know, I have a feeling that the people at Scissor Tail Stitches that the de designed this design are somewhere over there cringing with all these things I'm doing to this design. Okay, so I enlarged, I reduced that from the larger version. Now do you see that there's a little gap over here? I'm just going to click and drag and just move it just a bump over to fill in that gap. And now I made that leaf smaller. I also think I was a little concerned over here in this area because I wanted a vine that would go a little bit longer like that. So I'm going to use my polygon select tool. And now I am going to just increase the design, the, st the size on that. Then I want to rotate it just a little bit. Ooh, I like that. That's nice and pretty. Let's make it just a wee, wee, wee bit larger. There we go. Then... It would be kind of cool if we could make this green leaf just a little bit bigger and this yellow leaf just a little bit bigger. So let's try doing that. Let's rotate it first. And let's move it. Let's move this one over here. Oh, that's beautiful. Now let's make it just a little bit larger, maybe even move it a little bit more. There we go. I'm digging that. All right, now we're going to go down to our mint leaf. We got to do the polygon select tool with it. Now, I'm having a hard time seeing what I selected there. I'm going to turn off my show artistic view so I can see what I've actually selected. And I can tell you I accidentally grabbed a little something something there. So I'm going to press down control and select it and select it. There we go. Now I'm going to enlarge. And I have some little gaps there. That's where I'm going to... Now, this is getting a little bit more complicated, everybody. But I'm going to fix it. Don't you worry. I know how to do this. So I'm moving my nodes to get under my flower. There we go. There 
There we go. See what I'm doing? Just, just, you know, moving flower leaves around on a nice Sunday. And now I'm going to take and deselect. And now it looks like it's probably a good idea if I do the same with that stem down the middle. So I'm just going to move that down closer to the flower. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. And now I can put artistic view back on to see if I did a good job. Oop, 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 oop. Do you see that right there? I got to fix that. Don't worry. We can do it. So I'm just going to bring my nodes down around this flower. Get it a little bit prettier. There we go. I like it. Do you like it? Raise your hands if you like it. If you don't like it, say nothing. Okay, great. I'm glad we're all in agreement. You guys are the best. All right. So now I'm going to go over here to this color film again. And I'm going to click the top one. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to hold shift and left click. Now I have selected all of my embroidery design. I'm going over to mirror merge and I'm using mirror merge vertical and I'm repeating this design that I just created in my other mask so that it is placed just like my other mask is. I honest to goodness think that that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Now, I am happy to send this to the machine just the way it is right now to, to stitch this out. But I do want to point out something to you. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see what I'm talking about. And this is where you are going to have to decide if this is something you can live with or something that you're going to have to fix. This little wedge right here, that is a dart that is for my face mask. And that's so it can fit around my face a little bit better. But do you see how there's vines under there and maybe a little flower or whatever? Now that might make that hard to stitch through or you might think it's a little bit lumpy, whatever. If you want to remove those leaves, all you have to do is ungroup this and go to that polygon select tool and eliminate those leaves and then they won't be in that line of stitching. So we're going to send this design to our USB stick, then we're going to put it on our machine and then we're going to stitch this out. I've inserted the USB stick in my 880 Plus, and you can see I, there are going to be a variety of different designs that are all going to be on the zip file that you can download, purchase, and download at BerninaofNaperville.com, and it is called Fitted Face Mask Base. For this project, we're going to be using the small fitted face mask that fits in the maxi hoop. And now, don't be alarmed when this pulls into the design, it's just a little cockeyed. So we want to just move it over just a little bit. And we do that by touching the I button, touching the move around tool, and then our multi-function knobs are just going to allow us to move it over there until we don't see a red line anymore. Now, once we have that in there, we are really ready to sew. So I'm gonna close out of there and then I'm gonna hit my embroider button. Now there, this design is made up of two colors. The first color is just going to be stitched without any fabric on your stabilizer. In addition to the files that are in the, the, the in addition to the files that you'll find in the zip drive that you can download from Bernina of Naperville, you're also going to find a PDF of instructions. So this goes hand in hand with the video and hand in hand with the designs. And in those instructions, I recommend that you hoop up two layers of tearaway stabilizer, which is what I have in the hoop here. And then we're going to just, without our fabric yet, we're just simply going to stitch color number one. And color number one should really match your fabric. Now in this project, 
we are making the left side and the right side of the mask together at the same time. There's another thing I want to show you, and that is when we are working with a smaller hoop, where you'll need to just make one side of a mask at a time. Don't worry, we'll, we'll also go through that one too. Okay, although the machine is telling us to change the thread color, we don't really need to do that. We're just stopping down. So we need to put some fabric in there now, and I have already cut some material. I have this beautiful um, Anna Maria fabric from Free Spirit, and I'm gonna center my butterflies as I put this over on the hoop. Now this fabric is also interfaced, and you just wanna use your favorite interfacing. Uh, a lot of people really like putting the SF-101 from Pellon in their mask because it's got uh, a little bit breathability, it does also create a barrier, and it doesn't make the mask so stiff. And then once I have everything in place the way I like it, I am just gonna go ahead and press but this button that's flashing and stitch my second stitch. Our design is finished, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the hoop. I'm going to trim it, and we are going to stitch it together. So those steps are coming right up. I'm back and I wanted to show you how easy it is to do a fitted face mask in the large hoop. We're gonna start with using the fitted face mask for the left side. And this is going to fit right in the large oval hoop. Now, one of the differences is to get this into the large oval hoop, I could not include the cutting stitches. So those are taken out. So this is really a one color design. So in this case, we are not going to do a placement line, then lay our fabric down. In this case, we are actually just going to put the fabric that we're gonna make the left side of our mask out of right here and do one stitch. So I've got this great Hufflepuff fabric here that I'm going to be using and I want to just make sure that you know I'm kind of lining it up just like that and now I'm going to press the button and just get started. So don't leave it unattended when you're doing this one either. All right, that was speedy. So this side is done. I just need to go ahead and stitch the left side. I'm back at the machine and I've done everything just like I did before, only this time I have included this beautiful art gallery lining. So this is our small mask with the cutting line in the mega hoop on the Bernina 880 plus. Once this stitches out, I can remove it from the hoop, tear away the stabilizer, and then I'll show you how to sew it together. Here's our finished mask ready to be trimmed. So like I told you on our stabilizer, we stitched the actual lines to lay our fabric so we know that we were getting it in the right position. So we are going to use, when we sew this out, we're gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance, which means that I'm gonna trim right on this yellow thick stitching line. Now, be warned, we're not gonna trim the dart, we're just gonna trim the perimeter of each side of this mask. And I'm not even cutting into the stitching. I am just cutting very, very, very close to it as I go around the mask. So this side is complete. And this side is complete. And I'm going to repeat the process with the lining that I just stitched. Now, I showed you that 
there was going to be a different method for the designs that are stitched left side in one hoop and right side in one hoop. And we're gonna first start by measuring about three quarters of an inch from this outside stitching line on both of our mask pieces. Once I've done that, I'm gonna use my scissors. And honestly, I can dream a quarter of an inch. If you can't dream a quarter of an inch, just use a seam gauge and mark around the perimeter of the mask. And don't forget, if it's not exactly perfect, you've got your stitching line right here as a backup. And for this one, you're going to repeat on your other piece and your other two pieces of lining. When you're sewing your seams together, the first thing you're going to want to make are the darts. And that can be made with just a simple straight stitch with the default settings, needle in the center position and the default stitch length and stitch width. So I'm just gonna fold this piece over lining up my stitching lines together like this all the way to the point and I'm going to stitch just a wee 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 little bit to the left of that stitching line. So once again I'm lining these two pieces up together. I'm going to line my, the inside of the seam just a skosh to the right of my needle. So my needle is going to go on the outside of that stitching line. And I don't want the seam to come undone, so I'm just back tacking. Now I'm going to remove my pin before I get to the end. But then I'm just going to stitch a little into the corner, back tack, and cut. And I'm going to do the same technique on all of my face mask pieces. To sew my face mask together, I've switched to my 97D foot. I'm going to do a little bit on the 97D, then I'll go back to my regular standard sewing foot number one, um, which is a zigzag stitch. And that's because I don't like using this when I sew next to the wire. But for doing the face mask piece, this is a really good foot to use because not only is it a quarter of an inch to the side of the foot there, but I also can use my dual feed with it. Lining up everything together. Let's get that started in the back and go back a little bit and now forward. And then don't forget to line everything up at the end. And cut. And now I'm going to do the same with the lining piece. And making sure that I end with my seams lining up. And then back tacking and cutting. Now at this point, you could go to your iron and press your darts, but I just press my seams open with my finger and I do the same on my, in or my outside material. So I'm just taking my seam and I'm finger pressing open and I'm finger pressing this open together. And I'm gonna use a pin to hold it together. And then I'm going to, now I'm leaving the ends open because I'm going to feed a casing through here. So I'm just going to start this at the bottom using my quarter of an inch. Now I could use my number one foot just because really we're doing a quarter of an inch from my stitching right here, not from the edge of the material. Just keep that in mind as you do this. 
And also I want you to know that one little microscopic change is not gonna ruin your mask. This isn't a quilt where you have so many little skinny seams together that it adds up. Now I'm gonna make sure everything is flat as I get to this piece here. Remember everybody, do not stitch through your pin. Pull that baby out before you get to it. All right, now we're going to sew along the bottom. We're going to stitch a little few stitches forward, then backwards. opening up my seams at the bottom and opening up this seam here. Okay, I'm getting ready to sew my bottom piece here. I'm gonna go using my quarter of an inch again. I'm going forward and then I'm back stitching and then I'm gonna continue forward. And I'm gonna just, I've already pinned this to get that into position. Let's go ahead and just encourage this slightly. There we go, it was a good girl. There we go, all right, remove your pin before you get to it. Now, we wanna trim some curves. And make sure when you do this that you have a nice pair of sharp scissors. So the first thing is we want to clip the curve so that our mask lays nice and flat. So we're just going to clip, 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 clip. And then there's one other little section here we want to clip into the point and then we're gonna turn it inside out. All right, I pressed my mask. It looks pretty good, looks good on the inside, looks good on the outside, and now I'm gonna insert the wire. Now, I'm fresh out of paper clips, so I've twisted together some 26 gauge wire that I had left from some stump work projects that I was doing. But um, in your instructions that you're gonna find, I also recommend using a paper clip not a heavy duty paper clip, but a regular um, lightweight paper paper clip is about four inches long and will do the trick for these. So I'm gonna measure about the halfway point and bend my wire just a little bit. Then I'm gonna reach into the mask and feed it so that the lining is protected by the seam allowance. So there's a little bit of padding between the wire and the mask. And so once I can feel that little bump in there, I'm gonna stop and pin it into place, making sure I got it centered. That feels about right, okay. So now as I go around this curve, this is where I wanna switch my foot to my regular number one foot. It's hard working with a camera in your lap. Next time you sew, just, you know, Put a camera in your lap, video what you're doing. I'd like to see, I'd like to see how you're sewing. Get, you know, a little cat in the background meowing at you as you're sewing. But I'm just gonna stitch now. Now I'm lining this up just about to the edge of my foot here. And I'm just gonna simply stitch. The best seam allowance I can stitch Get the wire pushed out of the way. If you need to use another pin at this point, get another one in there to hold everything out of the way. I'm 
And don't forget to remove those pins before you get to them. And now go along the bottom with the same seam allowance. I'm using my Bernin, my Burnett Funlock 48 here, and uh, we're making the casing here, and this is, um, edge is gonna be visible, so I'm just gonna do an overlocker stitch there. And, um, and then I'll show you, um, this is in another YouTube video that I made. It's called Elastic Alternative. So you wanna check out the Elastic Alternative to know how I made these fun little um, elasticy uh, knit tubes using a serger as well. But all we want to do here is just overlock the edges of these raw edges that are shown here. So I'm gonna just start by serging and trimming just a little bit as I go through. And I like to cut right there on the blade. And now I'm gonna cut the other side. And then I'm gonna cut this. And now I'm ready to fold them over and stitch them at the sewing machine. All right, so I'm gonna fold this over, fold this over, and tuck it <laughs> in the casing. And then I'm gonna fold this over about three quarters of an inch and line this up right at the 5 eighths of an inch, right there at my machine. And now I'm gonna stitch just in a little bit, and I'm gonna stitch a few stitches forward, then a few stitches back, and a few stitches forward, all the way to the end, and then cut. And then I'm repeating that process on the other side. Okay. We only have one more step to do, and that's our elastic or our knit replacement, which or elastic replacement, which I have right here. So what I'm going to do with this is I know that on my ears, I only need about seven inches of ties to go behind my ears. So I'm going to measure this out here. I've even got a ruler right here on my table where I can measure this. So I'm measuring seven inches. And then I'm going to take a safety pin and fish this through. I should probably trim some of these threads, you know. This is a good job for the whole family to trim the threads. This is what I hear. Anywho, word on the street has it that kids, husbands, are good at trimming the threads. So now I just simply will stitch these little tubes together like this. And you know what? This would be a good time to change the needle plate and just do a zigzag stitch over this. If you've never changed your needle plate before, you just press on that. Look, I'm embarrassed. Look at that fuzz that's down in here. Pretend you didn't see that. Oh my goodness. This has been doing a lot of sewing, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So I'm switching to a zigzag stitch pretty close together and then a little further apart. Now I'm going to line this up. I'm going to use my hand wheel to turn my needle into position so I can remove my pin and I'm just going to stitch that together and cut. And now the point of this is I can trim this and now I've joined my piece and I can pull this through, get it inside the casing and voila, I have a nice little tie that'll go behind my ear. And all I have to do is repeat the process for the
Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed making a mask. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you make more. And I hope you found some way to bring some bright and cheery creativity into this. And uh, if you like this video and you want to see others like it, don't forget to subscribe to our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. You just go to youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and like, comment, and if you want to know when we post more videos like this, ring the little bell and then you'll get an alert every time. So until then, stay healthy, wash your hands, stay safe, and most importantly, wear a face mask, no matter how fancy or not fancy it is. Thanks a lot for watching.